Hey friends, as I am Pastor Fieberkorn with you here for our Catechism Mondays. Today's March 7th, the year of our Lord 2022. And if you remember last week, we began a new chapter in Catechism Mondays. We transitioned from the third article of the Apostles' Creed into the Lord's Prayer. And I had remarked then, I thought this will be a nice uh, segue into the Lenten season as well. And so um, last week we talked about um, just prayer in general. What is prayer? It's, it's speaking to God and words or thoughts. Today, before we get into the petitions of the Lord's Prayer popper, we're going to talk about uh, how we should pray. And I want to begin with a little reading from Luke chapter 11. Uh, this is uh, verses 1 through 4. And it says, Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, uh, and on with the Lord's Prayer. Now, that version of the Lord's Prayer that we see in Luke um, isn't exactly the same as Jesus teaches in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, the one that we recite and that we're used to saying is actually uh, the one from Matthew 6. They're very, very, very close. Uh, I think only your kingdom come is missing from the Luke account. Uh, but the reason I read the Luke one is because uh, the disciples come to Jesus, they see him praying and modeling prayer, and they say, well, what is the right way to pray? And he teaches them, and he says, when you pray, say these kind of words, uh, and he gives them the Lord's Prayer. Now, some people over the years have also pointed to Jesus' other words about uh, when he condemns the Pharisees for praying with vain repetitions. In other words, um, they pray, but you know, their lips are moving, but their head is not engaged in what they're praying. And so they have made the case, some people say that Jesus didn't mean us when we pray to say these exact words over and over because it just becomes mindless and meaningless. Um, I agree with that criticism in one way, but I also don't agree with it. Uh, the reason I don't agree with it is because if Jesus said, hey, pray these words, um, we should take him at his word and we should use them for our prayer. Well, there's nothing wrong with saying the Lord's Prayer over and over again. In fact, many non-Christians know the Lord's Prayer. When we go to funerals and we pray the Lord's Prayer at the graveside, even the non-Christians usually can join in. And in fact, young Christians, uh, this is one of the first practices of the faith they learn. Even a three or four-year-old uh, can learn to say the Lord's Prayer, and when it's prayed in worship, they can participate. Um, and they pray those words long before they have the ability to really know what it means to not be led into temptation, or etc. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's wrong to learn those words and have them in our memory and pray them, because then they stay with us our whole life long. Uh, but I do agree with the criticism in this sense. I don't know if you're like me, but when I pray the Lord's Prayer in worship, sometimes I just go into robot mode, and the thing begins and ends, and I said all the words, but my mind didn't think uh, a single bit about what I'm saying. Um, so, uh, in one sense, uh, it, that, that is not good, and we, we should try to slow ourselves down when we pray and actually think about the words we're praying, and, and one way I do that is I try to pick one petition each week in worship when the Lord's Prayer is prayed and really zoom my head in on that and sort of think, what does it mean? Forgive others, forgive my trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. I'll really focus in on that, and and kind of that, that helps me be on alert as I pray the Lord's Prayer um, and not, not just be saying the words. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the Lord's Prayer and how it can serve as a model for other prayers, because certainly our prayer life can go beyond the Lord's Prayer and should. And so let's turn to that next. Um, so here we have the petitions of the Lord's Prayer, the introduction, which we'll talk about next week, Our Father who art in heaven. Uh, Hallowed be thy name is the first petition, thy kingdom come is the second, and so on and so forth. Uh, seven petitions in total. And then uh, this conclusion, which was not part of the original prayer Jesus taught, but nevertheless is the part of a great Old Testament prayer by King David. And there's nothing wrong with saying it or appending it on, just to know that that wasn't in the original forms. Uh, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh. Uh, and let's just take a look at the structure of the prayer then. Um, Our Father of Art in Heaven, that really serves as an invitation to pray. And as I said, we'll talk about that next week. But then look what the first three petitions are about. God's name being hallowed, his kingdom coming, his will being done. Okay. These are all about spiritual blessings. Okay. 
so far, we haven't prayed about anything for me, All right? It's not until the fourth petition. Now we turn to my needs and say, give us this day our daily bread. So I prayed for the things of God first. Then I prayed for the things I need. And then look how it ends up. Uh, petitions five through six, forgive us, lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. These petitions are for the, the turning aside from evil. Okay, that my life would be oriented towards God, that I would live in his ways. And then, of course, the conclusion is the basis for praying, uh, because it's his kingdom and his power and his glory forever. That serves as a basis. You know, you wouldn't pray to someone who didn't have the kingdom and the power and the glory, because how could they help? But Jesus has all those things. And because he does, that means we can ask him for the things that we need. And so we see a pattern here of putting the things of God in priority in our prayer, and then our needs second. And I think sometimes when we think of prayer, we, we often think of, of my needs first. And we talked about that last week when we talked about different kinds of prayer. Uh, there's prayers that give God adoration and thanksgiving. Uh, they're not only uh, supplication. Uh, and so some people in their personal prayer life uh, have used this ACTS model of prayer. I think at school we teach PTA prayers, praise first, then thank God, and then finally ask. Uh, that's similar to this Acts model of prayer. Uh, adoration first, give praise to God, confess your sins, thank God for the blessings he's given you, and then finally come around and uh, make requests of God. And so uh, a pattern of prayer like the Acts model of prayer um, would be sort of in line with how Jesus taught us to pray. It's not those exact words, but it doesn't just begin with gimme, 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 or Lord, I need, I need, I need. It begins with the things of God, progresses to the things we need, uh, and even includes things like confession, which would be akin to the turning aside of evil. I want to repent of my ways. And so um, when Jesus, when the disciples said, Jesus, how, how, how should we pray? He gave them a model. And I think what the model shows at the very least is that prayer is not just about us. It's as much about communicating with God and giving him praise and thanksgiving as anything else. And so hopefully that will shape and form your prayer life. And I look forward to getting into the introduction next week with you. But for now, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have taught us to pray. Uh, help your Lord's Prayer guide our, our, our own prayers. Uh, help us when we pray those sacred words you have taught us to give uh, mental attention to what they mean so that they can continue to inform our lives every day. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Have a great week as always. Take care.